Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the regular meeting of the DeKalb City Council, February 22, 2021. Prior to our roll call this evening, I would like to indicate to anyone in the audience who would like to speak to any item on the agenda tonight, or for that matter, any item not on the agenda, to kindly fill out a speaker request form there in the foyer outside the door there. Give that to our executive assistant, Ruth Scott, and she will get it to me. We have one person that I see on Zoom who may be uh, willing to read the letter that he submitted under public participation. With that being said, I'd like to have our city clerk, Lynn Fazekas, who I see is joining us along with Bill Finucan, our second ward alderman on Zoom tonight. And if Lynn, if you would call the roll, please. Morris. Here. Finucan. Here. Smith. Here. Perkin. Here. McAdam. Here. Verbic. Here. Favor. Here. Mayor Smith. Here. Eight present. Much has been written and posted today following the death yesterday of former Mayor Bessie Chronopoulos. <coughs> Considerably more comments and tributes most certainly lie ahead. For tonight, if you join me by standing, let's simply take a moment in silence to respect the memory of this City of DeKalb public servant. Thank you. If you please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first item on the agenda tonight is to approve tonight's agenda. Unless any council member wishes to add or delete any item to our agenda, I would entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman Smith, that we approve tonight's agenda. Discussion? Roll call. Morris. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdam. Yes. Verbic. Yes. Favor. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight I. Thank you. Tonight's agenda is approved. We only have one individual who has indicated at this time that they would like to take part in the public participation portion of tonight's program. And our first 
person, and the only person who has indicated that they'd like to speak at this point is J.J. Wett, 127 Tilton Park Drive, DeKalb. And I see, J.J., you are on Zoom. Would you like to read the letter, or would you like me to do that for you? I can read it. Thank you. Yeah. So as uh, Mayor Smith said, uh, you know, of course, we're going to have many memories of Bessie. And uh, my statement is regarding Bessie. Uh, I mean, just uh, I, in memoriam of her, um, it is with sadness that I learned uh, the passing of Bessie Chronopolis. I met Bessie in 2015 when I first became involved with local politics. The first thing I noticed about her was how driven she was to create change. At that time, I didn't know that she was the previous mayor of DeKalb prior to my arrival to this great city. However, I soon was informed of who she was by her when she learned that I was running for county board. She then reached out to uh, help me in my race. Bessie imparted wisdom on me that I will never forget. She taught me to always ask for support regardless of which political affiliation people were part of. Get to know everyone. And of course, know your stance is on everything. I will miss Bessie's wisdom, caring spirit, but most of all, her drive. Her drive is a big, a big reason this city is where it is. Her drive will live on in all of us and we will do her proud. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. We move along now in item E under presentations, or do we have one other person who'd like to speak? Uh, Jim, do you want to speak during the uh, uh, discussion on the parking lot? Okay, we'll wait for you then on that. So we go to presentations. Uh, we have two members of Stagecoach Players Theater with us tonight, Greg Anderson and Gloria Dennison, who would like to make a special presentation. So I'd ask Greg, if you come to the podium, you're more than welcome to remove or lower your mask if you'd like. It would be easier for us to understand. Please. Okay. Uh, as the mayor said, my name is Greg Anderson, and here we have Gloria Dennison from Stagecoach. Uh, we're here to present an award, but we first just wanted to give you a quick update on the status of our organization and what we've been doing uh, over the past year. Uh, a year ago at this time, we were in final preparations to kick off our 74th season uh, with our big winter musical, which was going to be Big Fish. Um, and then, of course, about 10 days before that show was to open, the COVID closure kicked in and our stage has been dark uh, ever since. Ironically, the set for Big Fish was still there this entire time, waiting to go on. We only took it down two weeks ago, finally, uh, giving up on that show and canceling it for good. Uh, but even though our stage has been dark, the organization itself did not go away. Uh, we sort of refocused our efforts uh, into two major areas, uh, those being uh, community service and improving our building. And so to talk about the community service aspect of our activities over the last year, Gloria is going to give us a little background on that. Hello, everybody. Um, we have a COVID task force, which consists of myself, uh, Gloria Dennison, Jan Kuntz, and Angela Shiola Niemeyer. Uh, we have been, since last March, doing a fabric giveaway because we knew everybody was going to need to wear masks. And then we started doing a food drive. And Almost every week until it got really cold, we did a food drive and we have done food donations to over 12 area food banks and we have done, uh, we've rotated that. So most of the time everybody's got at least food twice. For Thanksgiving, we partnered with the Salvation Army and we did over 114 Thanksgiving dinners. For Christmas, we again partnered with the Salvation Army and had over 100 angel tree gifts for area children. There's also a group called Over 55, 
and we had over 55 gift bags given to the Family Service Agency to go to seniors in assisted living and in nursing homes, getting things like blankets and <clears throat> fuzzy socks and perfumes and stuff like that. We also gave three huge boxes of toys to the Toys for Tots. Um, we have made personally over 150 masks for the preschoolers and the teachers at Head Start. We also presented a children's Zoom theater camp and we still continue to have fabric and thread and lots of fun patterns for people who want to create masks and we do have people contacting us about getting that and we have our next food bank and donation tomorrow and we will be at our building from four to six we collect outside when it's warm enough otherwise we stand inside and run out and get the food when it's cold um, other than that, we're looking forward to preparing our building and following the regulations and the mitigations of the state so that hopefully we can open later this year and present theater. Okay, and, and as I said, the other area that we really focused on was uh, continuing to improve our, our building. Um, uh, the biggest project we undertook, uh, and some of these we were able to do simply because we were shut down uh, and there were no practices or rehearsals or performances going on. Uh, we actually uh, replaced our roof, which has been a continuing saga. Anyone who has a flat roof, I'm sure, can be sympathetic uh, to that situation. Uh, we also worked on our south entrance and sidewalks, and then a lot of interior work, uh, putting in a new sound system, uh, as well as an additional sound system for the hearing impaired, uh, who will be given um, earphones, headsets, uh, to listen to the productions. Uh, and then a lot of the areas that our, our audiences don't see. Uh, we renovated and updated our, our cu costume workshop, props area, bathrooms in the basement and the lighting throughout the basement, uh, as well as the box office. So uh, we've really put this hard time uh, to good use in trying to just make our building as, you know, the building was built in 1948. We were just trying to make it as good as we possibly can. But our main reason for being here tonight is to give an award. In January, typically we have our annual meeting and awards banquet. Obviously this year it was a Zoom presentation. Um, and one of the awards that we give every year is called the Business of the Year Award, which we give to an area business or group outside of Stagecoach Players whose support of the organization uh, we are especially grateful for. And the winner this year for Business of the Year was uh, the City of DeKalb. Uh, because um, 20 years ago, when we moved into our facility downtown, ever since then, uh, the city has been gracious in its support of our organization, both financially, uh, with TIF funding, twice at least, uh, as well as promotionally. Um, city signage, city PR efforts, the websites, um, they are constantly helping to promote the various cultural organizations in DeKalb, including Stagecoach. And we're very grateful for their efforts and their support. And so we'd like to present uh, Mr. Nicholas with this award for Business of the Year 2020, the City of DeKalb. Gloria, Greg, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. We will accept that on behalf of the city and its many residents and its many theater goers over the years. So thank you very, very much. Our second presentation tonight is one that we should all be very, very proud to witness, and that is the recognition of NIU police officer uh, Matt Lave and DeKalb firefighter paramedics Jared Thorpe and Adam Miller for their rescue efforts in the High Meadows fire of just a few days ago, February 12, 2021. To handle this part of the presentation, I'd like to call on City Manager Nicholas. And he's here. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I'm gonna speak from the podium tonight because there, as you can see, we have a number of people we wanna honor and some of them are outside. We'll try very uh, judiciously to bring them in and for a bow uh, in, a, in a bit. Uh, but as you may know, or you may not know, at about 4.30 a.m. on Friday, February 12th, the DeKalb Dispatch Center received multiple calls of an apartment fire at the High Meadows apartment complex on West Lincoln Highway. 
It was reported that the occupants of uh, apartment 10 in building L might be trapped. All available fire and police units were dispatched by the fire, to the fire, excuse me, police officers from DeKalb and NIU were first on the scene and found heavy smoke pushing from the lower level apartment. One male victim was lying outside with severe injuries. On the report that a second victim might still be in the apartment, NIU police officer Matt Lave and DeKalb firefighter paramedics Jared Thorpe and Adam Miller entered the apartment and could vaguely see the second victim, a female, lying unconscious in a back bedroom. Officer Lave and firefighter Thorpe and Miller hand carried the victim from the bedroom to the outside where she was immediately given emergency treatment by DeKalb firefighter paramedics. Both victims were transported to Northwestern Hospital by DeKalb ambulances, further stabilized there by hospital emergency staff and air airlifted to a burn trauma center where they are currently receiving intensive medical treatment. Matt, Jared, and Adam bravely put their lives on the line without hesitation and are deserving of our heartfelt gratitude and recognition. Won't you please rise and offer them your applause for a job well done. Other professionals performed with merit and deserve our recognition as well. And many of them are out here tonight. If you don't mind, you can come in sort of behind me here briefly and then we'll pray it out. <laughs> From our DeKalb Fire Department, Luke Halverson, captain and incident commander that night. From engine three, which was the first fire engine on the scene, Travis Carr and Pat Erickson. From Medic 1, uh, the ambulance, John Ritter and Joe Long. From Medic 2, Chris uh, Krupa and Trevor Chilton. From our dispatch center, uh, and this is just as important, Keller Kurth, I don't know if Keller's here tonight, but he was the one who was answering 911 calls that night. There's a lot of traffic, coordinated messages to and from the arriving units, did a very good job. Samantha Mc McMean, our telecommunicator also, answered uh, calls at that time and coordinated resources. DeKalb Police, offer Officer Kevin Balschmidi, he spotted the female victim through the window and experienced uh, a lot of smoke inhalation at the time after breaking the window to help vent the apartment. Uh, Sergeant Mallett, who assisted him and located victim, uh, the uh, uh, female victim. And NIU Police, David Jadron, who was assisting all along in, in locating uh, the female victim as well. So, to all of them, to all of you, thank you for your <laughs> courageous work. Thank you. Thank you all. We can be so proud of our police department, our fire department, and in this case, the collaborative <clears throat> spirit between NIU and our departments. So again, thank you very much, and Bill, thank you for uh, shepherding that uh, recognition. Our final report tonight under presentation is our annual uh, notice from our director of the library, uh, Emily Faulkner on the DeKalb Public Library FY 2020 annual report. Emily usually has come to city council chambers, but since we're now in your home, I know. it's, nice to have it's you great there. to have you uh, here at the library to uh, deliver this uh, 2020 FY 2020 annual report. Emily Faulkner. Thank you. Um, it's a, that's a tough act to follow, so I'll, I'll try to be heroic in my speech, although not in my actions, unfortunately. Um, I'm Emily Faulkner. I'm the director of the DeKalb Public Library. Oh, oh, yeah, it's okay. 
Um, thank you all for having me here to my Yusuna's room tonight. Uh, I'm excited to give you an update on the library and what happened here in 2020 and what we've been able to achieve. Despite the many unexpected challenges that last year brought, we were able to meet or exceed most of our goals for 2020, which was a surprise to me, but a pleasant one, um, and to accomplish a number of things that were not even on our radar a year ago. When the library shut down for in-person services on March 13th, our staff immediately began planning ways to continue to serve our patrons virtually. In that first month and then in months to follow, we expanded our digital collection so that patrons could keep reading from home, added several new services to provide access to feature films and other digital materials that we thought would have interest to people who were sheltering in place, and created a list of free educational and entertainment resources for all ages from around the world. Soon we were able to start offering our own virtual programs to the community. We began with our virtual princess and superhero story times that are provided by parties with character. And those were a hit. Nearly 400 families regularly attend our live programs through Facebook Live on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock or view the recordings later on our Facebook page. Inspired by that success, we've continued to host virtual events for all ages. Our first large all ages virtual event, which was held in June on Zoom, was Stairway to Zeppelin. We also added smaller events, including Uno for Teens, weekly morning and bedtime story times, book clubs, cooking demonstrations, and many more diverse and entertaining events. These virtual programs have proved to be a way for us to connect to the community when we cannot gather together. And in fact, in October and again this upcoming month of March, we've hosted more events and programs than we ever had before, uh, including when we were doing programs in person. We actually have a, a larger load of events going on now than we ordinarily do when we're fully open. Um, and we've heard from some patrons that they like the new format and hope it continues to be an option, uh, especially for those who don't wish to leave their home on a snowy evening uh, but still want to participate. Um, of course, our main goal was always how to, how to navigate safely lending books. Uh, in June, the state of Illinois lifted some restrictions and we were able to begin curbside pickup of library materials. That continues to this day. Um, and we have been changing the regulations for how long things are quarantined as new information comes out, different science. Uh, we're currently on a 24-hour quarantine for materials, which just was reduced from three days and previously was seven days. So as we are getting new information, uh, we've been able to reduce the amount of time that we quarantine materials. In July, we were able to begin limited in-person services, including open hours every day of the week and socially distanced computer stations, while also inc increasing our cleaning protocols to meet the health department recommendations. We continue to offer curbside pickup for those who need it four times a week, um, and we're open every day of the week for slightly shortened hours. Once summer hit, the library partnered with the DeKalb Park District to offer some really wonderful outdoor story times, performances, and activities that gave us a chance to see each other while still keeping safe. And even with all the curveballs that 2020 threw at us, we haven't stopped trying to find new ways to improve and innovate. This fall, we launched our library of things with 10 internet hotspots and 10 ukuleles that can be borrowed from pa by patrons. We've also added science kits, sewing machines, and other exciting items that are coming uh, on the horizon as we get them ready to go out. In 2021, we know that things may change and be outside our control, but the library remains committed to enrich, inform, entertain, and inspire the people of DeKalb, no matter what comes our way. At the moment, that looks like a lot of collaboration with other local organizations and libraries in nearby communities to expand our virtual programming reach. This spring, we look forward to our continuing our partnership with the League of Women Voters and now WNIJ to host a virtual candidate forum on March 6th so people can be informed before they vote in the municipal elections this April. We're looking forward to weather warming up so we can continue our excellent partnership with the Park District and get outside for some more in-person events. And we're looking forward to the time later this year when we can fully open and invite everybody back for in-person programming and more opportunities to play, meet friends, or just sit and enjoy a good book in a comfortable chair. Last year, we all found out how much we depend on one another and had to work to strengthen our connections when usual options weren't available. I'm proud of all of us, including my amazing staff, who show me every day what dedication, flexibility, and creativity look like under pressure, but also my neighbors, friends, and family throughout DeKalb. We've managed to make the best of a bad situation and found new ways to make this a wonderful place to live, even in the toughest of times. I'd also like to thank City Council and City staff for the continued assistance you've given the library over this past year with all of its ups and downs. Um, having elected officials and city employees who support the library means a lot, and we're certainly happy to have you here uh, using our space now. It's nice to, to feel like we're all a little bit closer, especially with you just over the street there. Um, this time, I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone has for me. Alderman Morris. You said ukuleles, <coughs> and did you also say sewing machines? We have at least one sewing machine that we're, rent, that we're lending out now, and we have five concert... Oh, gosh, I guess get this wrong. We have, we have five regular ukuleles and five bass ukuleles, I think. There's one that's the higher one and one that's the lower one 
five of each. That was part of a grant with the Fan Farney Wurlitzer Fund um, and a collaboration with the Wild Blue Ukulele Orchestra. So they actually did a kickoff event for us and they have been doing, they used to do drop-in ukulele strum and sings here, uh, but they've been doing those virtually. So they've been very popular and a lot of people have been using the ukuleles. <laughs> That's, that's awesome. I, I'm just completely impressed with the variety of programming that you're offering, and you're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. I've used the expression, Alderman Morris, many times about the number of community treasures we have in our community. The DeKalb Public Library certainly is one of those. And Emily, on behalf of the City Council, on behalf of the citizens of the City of DeKalb, not only do we thank you for this report tonight, but we thank you for all you do making this a much richer community, one that we are so proud of. Thank you very much. Thank you, it's really, you know, it's having come back after the, you know, for the last four years being back in my hometown, it's, it's been really wonderful to serve here and I, especially in this pandemic, I'm, I'm glad I got to be here for it if I had to be somewhere, so thank you very much. If there's anything else? No? Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, moving right along, we have no mayoral appointments this evening. Uh, we now uh, ask for a motion to, con uh, to approve our consent agenda, uh, unless any council member wishes to remove any item from the consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda is as follows. Number one, minutes of the February 8, 2021 regular city council meeting. Number two, accounts payable and payroll through February 22, 2021, in the amount of $2,420,863.47. Number three, investment and bank balance summary through December 2020. Number four, year-to-date revenues and expenditures through December 2020. Number five, our hospitality recovery program update through December 2020. And number six, our Freedom of Information Act FOIA report for January 2021. I'd entertain a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Morris and seconded by Alderman Smith. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. <clears throat> Finucan. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkin. Yes. McAdam. Yes. Verbic. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight I. Thank you. The consent agenda is approved as presented. We have no public hearings tonight, nor do we have any special considerations for council, so we'll move right into resolutions and ordinances. Our first resolution tonight is resolution 2021-019, authorizing an architectural improvement program, AIP economic incentive for Natalie Brown for the property at 115 North 1st Street in the amount of $1,675. I'd like to, first of all, entertain a motion to approve this and get it on the table. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman McAdam, seconded by Alderman Morris. City Manager Nicholas, please. Thank you, Mayor. The um, AIP request you have is for the commercial property at 115 North 1st Street. Uh, many of you are familiar with the ramp offices that have been there for a long time. And uh, the the application is to help uh, with some exterior painting that they plan that the owner Natalie Brown tends to do as the weather moderates uh, as the program guidelines uh, dictate she went out and got a couple of estimates the low estimate was from JM painting uh, according to the AIP protocols we would could pay up to 25 percent of uh, the exterior painting uh, cost and uh, that's what's before you tonight that comes to $1,675. This is the first EIP request for the year. We had 70,000 budgeted uh, in the year. I don't know that we'll get to that point, but uh, this is the very first out of the, out of the box. Uh, we recommend your approval. Any further discussion? I see Natalie is here tonight. Natalie, first of all, I wanna thank you for taking advantage of 
of what the city has to offer. We like to participate with our businesses, especially on programs like this where you're improving our property. Uh, there being no other questions, I'm going to ask for a roll call, please. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdam. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Abstain. Finucan. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Seven I, one abst abstention. Thank you. Let's move right along to number two, resolution 2021-020, amending resolution 2020-029 to revise the survey exhibits associated with permanent bus stop easements, easements located within the University Village subdivision. Motion, please. So moved. So moved. Been moved by Alderman Finucane, seconded by Alderman Favor. City Manager. It's a pretty straightforward uh, request. It sure uh, is. Summarized in one sentence, a rather <laughs> lengthy sentence now that I look at it. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, Remedy here is just to re-record uh, or to record some corrected easements and we recommend your approval. Any discussion? If not, roll call. Perkins. Yes. McAdam. Yes. Furbick. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight I. Thank you. Thank you. That resolution is approved. Now we move to ordinances. We have one ordinance tonight for second reading. Uh, ordinance 2021-003, approving a special use permit for a parking lot as a principal use when located within 300 feet of the use served, 1030 East Locust Street, nearing electrical works. We've discussed this uh, at, at length before, but I'm glad it's back on the table now here for second reading. I'd entertain a motion to approve, please. So moved. Oh, sorry. <laughs> second. It's been moved by Alderman Morris and seconded by Alderman Favor. Uh, before our city manager speaks uh, James Gibson from 1024 East Locust uh, would like to speak to this item and James try to keep your comments to three minutes or less okay I'm, I'm not gonna be up here long it's just the process has already started the lot the lot's been graded and it's all it's all ready to go and all it needs to be is just the asphalt put on and the fence put up and if everyone follows the rules there about no trucks on that parking lot, I, I have no problem with them. And I hope you guys approve that tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. Gibson. I appreciate your comments. Now, City Manager Nichols, uh, there's, you've been given, provided quite a bit of background on this. I know we've discussed it at length. Anything to add? Uh, yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, and uh, I, I, I brought some help tonight. Uh, got Don Harper, our chief building official, who's been very involved in this from the beginning, as has Zach Gill, our, our city engineer. And uh, as you can see in the background with a lot of photographs and, and some, uh, some new suggestions, uh, I, I shamelessly thought we could piggyback onto the very specific special use request on the parking lot to address uh, some broader concerns that have aggravated uh, concerns that led to the parking lot uh, request in the first place. And I, and I think it's very hard to separate one from the other. I'm just going to set this up. And I might also mention that uh, Scott Dillon uh, is uh, on the uh, Zoom tonight. So if you have any questions, uh, you can certainly ask him. But the way I set it up in the background is uh, that we have a vehicle parking problem on East Locust in particular. Uh, uh, east of 10th, between 10th and 11th, and uh, as the neighbors are well aware of, uh, it's been a, an aggravation for a long time. Uh, Nearing Electric has purchased a lot uh, at the corner of 11th and Locust, and 
uh, as the previous speaker said, uh, the, the lot's been prepped with uh, <coughs> the awareness and, and the support of our building department uh, uh, so that it can be paved as the weather permits this spring. Uh, we, we recommend that the special use permit be approved on second reading tonight because whatever we work out, uh, whether it's this month or in the months ahead, on the truck problem, uh, it will provide, as soon as it can be used, some immediate relief to residents between 10th and 11th uh, on, on that piece of the corridor. So I wanted to make that clear. That's what our uh, uh, recommendation is tonight. But our recommendation also is to, is to maybe uh, look a little more broadly than I had presented a month ago uh, at the meeting on the 25th of January. Uh, we've taken into account truck movements in a more studied way. Uh, Don has been out a couple times a day, uh, most days since uh, the last meeting, and Zach has too, and even the city manager's been out there more than once, uh, many times more than once. And in particular this morning, which was a classic example of the, of the uh, problems that we have with truck staging, in particular, uh, not just between uh, 10th and 11th, but also between uh, 8th, or a little bit west of 8th, and 10th Street. And so what I've proposed in the background here is to look at a reconfiguration of that stretch of East Locust, which uh, runs between 7th and 10th, to look for a couple of options, and I've identified in general what those options might be, a couple of options to get the trucks off the street uh, and to uh, afford a little more rational way for employees to park on that corridor. Uh, one uh, of the options, option one, uh, is going to involve expense by the company to rationalize the, or that's, that's a meaningless term, to build a, uh, uh, an extension to the loading dock so that a truck can back into it running parallel with Locust rather than backing up 9th Street uh, to block Locust Street. And option two, and, and there's some striping involved that the city would have to do and so forth, but option two is, is, involves everything in option one plus uh, some additional work that would be done on the south side of that corridor to afford more parking. So it's not just a net zero that there'd actually be some gain in, in employee parking along that corridor. I will stop there. Uh, Don and Zach, uh, it's all yours. Okay, thank you. So we have been working, well, I shouldn't, this PD has been uh, involved in this area for many, many years, and I know there was a presentation done some years back that the PD um, did where when Nearing was doing their building at 2009 um, that was the hope of alleviating um, some of the truck traffic and you know the horrible thing with Nearing is they keep growing <laughs> you know it, it's a great thing for them and and they're trying to keep up with their orders and uh, continue to be a viable viable business where they're at um, and it it has created a lot of issues for the neighborhood and the area. And so our interest is trying to work with them so they can continue their business. You don't pick something like that up and you know move it across town. Um, but then also to you know help the uh, neighbors there with the, the truck. So what we have in the pictures here is where the parking lot is right across from their dock for the newest building that I would call that. And uh, that's going to alleviate parking on this street here where we can fit 20 parking spots uh, right there at the corner of Locust and 11th Street. Um, nearing, they, they are working on being a little more organized with their logistics, uh, utilizing trucks to sit in the bays while they're waiting to do their business where Generally speaking, they would just kind of sit on the roadway. So, we, you know, we've had lots of conversation. And Scott Dillon, who is um, relatively new at Nearing, I don't know how long Scott's been there, but uh, we started in March with this conversation. Scott came into it probably in May or June, and he's been just a huge help with the logistics there and trying to um, provide some relief on the streets with their trucks. and. Um, there's, uh, we've got some lovely pictures here of things that are going on out there. 
um, just you know four five six trucks lined up along the road um, cars you know you go down a road and you don't realize it but you know you're gonna have a tough time getting through and and they do try to leave a space for a car to you know weasel through it's just not the way that public streets really should be utilized so we're, we're looking to try to alleviate some of that um, loading trucks right on the streets and that yeah. is west of 10th street just to be clear what you're showing here yes that's west of um, the, the part that we're hoping that some of those cars you know can come up to the parking lot um, alleviating between 10th and 11th and then maybe even taking a few west uh, this is where they back into the dock and actually cross uh, locust street there at 9th and this is the way the building was built this is what it was from day one and this is what's happened um, it's just that their business continues to grow and i don't know what it is but anytime i go there during the day or any of people on my team there's a truck there and it's a different one it's not like they're there for three hours they're there for 15 20 minutes 30 minutes and then another one comes you know so it's just a continual thing and it's again it's a great thing that nearing is so active and busy um, but we would like to really try to figure out what we can do to to um, alleviate the neighborhood and you can see the cars parked along there those are their employees that are parked uh, to the west of 10th street um, and they go all the way down to 9th and then they park on 9th and 8th street um, both sides usually are aligned um, so if we go down a little further I think we've got there's the dock that they back into that crosses locust um, and the thought there is that Bill had mentioned is to have a dock that comes out the, the city needs to work on some property there and then they can actually back in um, from the west into the dock and nearing has um, well Zach's been talking to, to Scott about that there is interest in this project and trying to come together in a collaborative effort to you know work on this area for the residents and uh, and nearing as well um, so do you want to talk about that that one Zach was a mastermind this. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Martin Scorsese, and I think I did a really horrible editing job trying to step us through the yeah. <laughs> visual images there. Um, yeah, so the great thing about the lot was it brought some fresh faces to the table. You know, we got an age-old, generational old problem, and we got some, some new, new faces, new voices around the table on, on both ends. So the lot was a great place, I think will be a great success for one portion of the of the problem, but I think the best part of the lot, more than anything will ever give us in parking, is that it restarted this conversation. Um, so this is, is kind of a, a very cursory, very rudimentary look that, that we took at what would be feasible, you know, following the standard geometric rules um, for streets and for parking, you know, what we follow under IDOT's Bureau of Local Roads. So what you would see here um, is converting locust one way westbound starting at 10th street and terminating farther to the west um, and what that would allow as mentioned if you can follow is there a pointer on that uh there is yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think the council's looking that way so oh, oh. Doesn't, yeah. it works on yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. both. So, yeah, 10th Street would be at the screen right, if you would, um, proceeding then west. Um, and what that would allow is along the face of Nearing's kind of legacy building there, the larger white, white building. Uh, as the city manager had referenced, you can see my kind of crude black square there at the end of 9th. Yeah. Um, they would then be able to pull past um, and back into a dock as well as create staging for at least two more trucks who then as each pulls out you can back in and, and you know you can you can do that we could probably get about three in there at a time um, the other thing that does is to the east of that now that that area is essentially shielded and become a one-way lane that could be converted from the current parallel parking to diagonal parking um, so we make up that longitudinal distance and we can convert it to 45 and gain back some spaces um, 
that's the as the city manager referenced that's the that's the free right price of admission you're just in if they build the dock we can do that no expense um, necessary in the in the public right-of-way that could be flipped the other side both between 8th and 9th and for a portion um, between 9th and 10th if we were to remove that curb um, back to the sidewalk line similar to you see like in a, in a in a central business district and then pave that and stripe it we could also get a 45 on that side so you would have and we kept it generous um, I think the minimum required is actually 12.75 feet for that aisle. I think we programmed it at 14 or 15 feet. You know, we don't want to play it that close. So you'd have a nice 15-foot aisle, and then you'd have 45 parking on both sides. That gets their employees very close to the facilities in which they're working. It obviously creates a net increase of spots. Um, and so that, that would be kind of a, a second plan here again. The parking lot started this conversation. My last contact with Mr. Dillon was they were excited and definitely willing to discuss the potential for that. So um, again, not asking for anything on this tonight except for to know that it's wonderful that a conversation is being had and there's maybe some momentum here. So what we're looking at right now, since we have a motion on the floor and a second, we are simply approving the special use permit for the parking lot. You have reviewed this. You will bring some more information back to us if we need to approve anything. Is that correct? Uh, we will, uh, yeah, we've got really two projects here. One is to finish the parking lot, which gets uh, cars off the street, employee vehicles off the street, into the parking lot at 11th and Locust. And then what Zach and Dawn and, and briefly I described is, is an evolving project which we'll bring back to you uh, at a future council meeting. So approving tonight is simply the parking lot? Yes. Okay. Now, I'd like to open it up for any council discussion. Alderman Morris? I just want to thank you all for taking the time on this and making it a better plan. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. Thank you, Zach and uh, Dawn and your staffs to, you know, you put a lot of work on this along with city manager Nicholas and we appreciate it. So we look forward to uh, getting some um, actionable items, if you will, on some of these as we roll forward in the spring. But right now we're going to, if we approve this tonight, we're going to get to work on that parking lot. Uh, Alderman Perkins. Yeah, good, great work. Th thanks for all the work you're putting in. I realize there's, there's quite a bit that's gone into it. Um, and it's great to hear the input from the neighbors that, that they're involved in the process as well. Um, my big questions would be on next steps. What and when for next steps? Because it took something to restart the conversation and we have some, some momentum with the conversation and I, don't, I really don't wanna, don't wanna lose that. Uh, on our end, uh, Mr. Gill, uh, as you know from the last couple of years, is very good at, at uh, quantities and pricing. So uh, our objective is probably in about the same period of time, in about 30 days, to come back to you with uh, a, a, a more detailed plan, hopefully with the support of, of uh, Mary Electric and Scott Dillon, and uh, we appreciate their work with us. And uh, we, we have an idea of, of reciprocal uh, proposed obligations and, and uh, whatever's needed and there'll probably be a number of options to show you, you know. If the company does this, then that, and if the city does this, then, then we get this. And, and at this point, I can't say what that's going to be, but as you can see, we played out everything that we know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think at this point, as you said, Alderman, it's, it's important to keep pushing ahead and to get to some concrete numbers and, and parameters for a project. And this is something we can probably do, I'm thinking, this year. Okay, great. Get done. Okay. Are we okay then with hearing, hearing, yes, uh, all of them in favor? I just, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, working on this. Obviously, it shows the city, you know, thinking outside the box. We're coming with ideas, trying to be business friendly. Uh, you know, to a legacy company in our in our uh, community. So certainly, just want to 
thank you and the staff for the work you've done on this. Um, makes my heart warm. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we need more. We need more of this in our community, working with and attracting additional businesses. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, any further conversation or discussion? If not, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Roll call, please. McAdam. Yes. Burbick. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight I. Thank you. That ordinance is approved. Now we have a few ordinances for first reading. The first one is Ordinance 2021-005, amending the fiscal year and December 31, 2020 budget. To get this on the floor, I'd entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Smith, seconded by Alderman Verbeek. City Manager Nicholas. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a few FY20 uh, invoices are still being processed, uh, payments being made uh, at the end of this week, uh, really the end of the month, but the end of this work week. We're, we're done with that. The books are closed. And this was the last opportunity to bring you some changes to clean, clean up uh, uh, a number of uh, things in the FY20 capital line items that uh, were much affected by COVID, uh, particularly on the revenue side. And on the spending side, uh, we, COVID also was a big uh, actor in uh, how far we were willing to go on spending. And you recall very well, we went going back uh, to our street maintenance program, we, we made some judicious uh, uh, trimming. And, and uh, so as you look at these, these charts, uh, you can see pretty clearly that um, we, we were down in revenue and we were even more uh, uh, reluctant on the spending side. Many times more dollars were, were not spent than, than uh, those dollars that, that failed to come in. So uh, this, this, this is the story of 2020. Uh, the, the good thing is we've got some revenue to build on in 2021 on the capital side, on the, on the a general operating side, a little different story, but uh, you, you held back, uh, we recommended that you hold back, and, and that's the tale that's told here. Uh, I, I should say one other thing, there's also cleanup here. Uh, as you know, we received some money uh, for a couple of programs, and uh, through IDOT in particular, for uh, a number of, of road and, and uh, other projects, and some money that we hadn't expected and transit as well. So we uh, uh, are recognizing that here. If we didn't change some of these line items, they, they, what we had thought would be our spending and, and our revenues in, the, in December 2019 in advance of, of FY 2020 would be way off. So that's another cleanup thing that we're doing here. So we appreciate your support and, and, and your vote in favor. Okay, any questions or discussion? Roll call, please. Burbick. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Sanukin. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight I. That is approved on first reading. Do we want to waive second reading and approve? Move to waive second reading and approve. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Morris, seconded by Alderman Smith, that we waive second reading on this and approve this this evening. Any discussion? Roll call. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. 
Rubik. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight aye. Thank you. That ordinance is approved. Number two, ordinance 2021-006, approving an amendment to the special use permit for a private therapeutic day school approved by ordinance 2020-015 for the property located at 900 East Garden Street. That's the Menta Group Cheeseboro Elementary School. Motion, please. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Verbeck, seconded by Alderman McAdams. City Manager Nicholas, anything to add here? Uh, just, Mayor, uh, you know, it was about a year ago, uh, the former uh, school superintendent and staff came to us and said, uh, hey, we've got an interested party that wants to uh, lease the uh, Cheesebro Elementary School. And uh, that had been closed since 2011, and we looked into it. It's a, uh, an a, a entity of the Menta Group, which uh, is involved in a private therapeutic uh, day school activities and, and serves, uh, has for a long time served uh, the DeKalb School District. So uh, at that time, the council approved uh, a special use permit to allow that to happen at the location at 900 East Garden Street. And uh, they've asked uh, for uh, some amendments to deal with uh, some site issues. And those are detailed in, in very uh, deep detail here. Uh, but uh, uh, to the uh, satisfaction of the neighborhood, uh, and I've underlined this in my background, uh, there's to be no student drop-off or bus traffic along the access drive as proposed here along East Garden. There's, there's more parking provided than was there. So on the whole, uh, we feel, Dan Olson, our principal planner, feels the, the uh, Planning Zoning Commission feels unanimously that this is a good thing and we ask for your support. Yeah, there was excellent discussion at planning and zoning. If you happen to watch that the other night, uh, unanimous <coughs> approval of this. Barb Food Mart is going to be wrapped into that from Huntley. Uh, and uh, so I think it's going to be just a great uh, all around uh, uh, a situation there. Uh, do we have any further discussion? Alderman Morris. I just have one question. Um, do you know what sort of revenue this is going to pull in for the school district? Hmm, good question. I don't. Tammy, Dan? School on the oh, campus. Tammy, you're on. Hi, Tammy. The quote. Did you hear the question, Tammy? I did. Um, what we're looking at is the lease that we are entering into with Menta Group. Over, we're, we're renovating the, the building and we're sharing in the cost of that renovation. And the out-of-pocket cost for the school district will actually be repaid over an eight-year time frame. So um, after that eight years, then it would be a revenue generating should we continue with a lease agreement. I don't necessarily have the specifics after that eight years, but should the contract end after that eight years, we would have a fully renovated building that would have been fully paid for by the lease agreement as well as um, our portion. Our portion would be paid for by the lease. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Tammy. Any further questions? Okay, roll call. Morris. Yes. Fenukin. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight aye. We do have the option to uh, waive second reading and approve tonight if any member would like to make that motion. Move to waive second reading and approve. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Morris, seconded by Alderman Perkins that we waive second reading and approve this ordinance this evening. Any further discussion? If not, roll call, please. Sanukin. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Furby. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight aye. Thank you. That ordinance is approved. Moving right along, ordinance 2021-007, approving a zoning map amendment 
from the HI district to the PDI district and amending a development agreement on the north side of Girler Road, east of South First Street, and this is from Midland Trust Company and Jim Planey. I'd entertain a motion, please. So moved. So moved. It's been moved by Alderman McAdam, seconded by Alderman Fanukin. City Manager. Uh, the owner of this property, Mr. Planey, as, as I uh, mentioned in the background, has been trying since uh, early in 2019, so a couple of years, to gain state approval of a solar energy generation facility. And each year we give them a year to find out. And so I'm looking for um, something uh, just a little bit different this time to still <coughs> allow for that as a permitted use, but also to look at uh, those permitted uses, not, any, not looking for special uses, that are already allowed in the HI district. And uh, the Planning Zoning uh, Commission thought that was a very a reasonable uh, request, considering the vagaries of the market right now. And uh, we support it as well. We hope you will. Yes, yeah, there was a uh, basically a holdup at the state level, uh, but uh, our Planning and Zoning Commission, after considerable discussion the other night, felt it certainly made sense. So, uh, any further discussion? Roll call. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdam. Yes. Rubik? Yes. Safer? Yes. Morris? Yes. Finucan? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Adai? That ordinance is approved on first reading. I'd entertain a motion to waive second reading if a council member would like to do that. Move to waive second reading and approve. Okay, it's been moved by Alderman Verbeek, seconded by Alderman Perkins, that we waive second reading and approve this ordinance this evening. Any further discussion? Roll call. Perkins. Yes. McAdam. Yes. Verbeek. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Fanukin. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Adai. Thank you. That ordinance is approved. Our final ordinance consideration tonight on first reading is 2021-008, authorizing a reimbursement in the amount of $470,506.93 to Northern Illinois University for the overpayment of the 2020 annual contribution for integrated transit services. There's quite a bit of background on this. I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Morris, seconded by Alderman Smith. City Manager Nicholas. Uh, nothing to add that I had explained here. Right. We owe it. Pretty straightforward. Any discussion? Roll call. McAdam. Yes. Burbick. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Fanukin. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Eight I. I'd entertain a motion to waive second reading and approve tonight. Move to waive second re reading and approve. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Favor and, and seconded by Alderman McAdams that we waive second reading and approve this ordinance this evening. Any further discussion? Roll call. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Fanukin. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdam. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Adai. Thank you. That ordinance is approved. Reports and communications. We have uh, a number of uh, 
opportunities for our city council to make any report that they like or any comments and we'll start with our first ward alderman carolyn morris thank you mayor um i couldn't let this night go by without acknowledging bessie's passing and so i just wanted to say that she'll be dearly missed and i almost feel like we should save a seat for her <laughs> so that's all thank you second ward alderman bill Fanukin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as usual, I want to comment on the pandemic. Uh, I want to report that I got my first shot two weeks ago. Had no after effects. I'm looking forward to getting my second shot in another two weeks. I encourage everybody, when it's their turn, to get their vaccine and help us uh, reach uh, herd immunity as soon as possible. But again, continue to wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands, and do what you can to protect yourself and others. I also want to mention uh, former Mayor Kanopoulos. Uh, <clears throat> while she and I did not often agree all the time on uh, different events over the last eight years at City Council, we had a great respect for each other and a very uh, uh, meaningful and in ways joyful relationship. And, uh, you know, Bessie, in her, before she became a politician, was a teacher. And I think over the last eight years, I've observed her continue to try and teach uh, members of city council in uh, things that she thought were right for the city to help. And uh, that's what I'd like to say about Bessie and uh, Bessie will miss you. Yeah, I wanna just thank the media, the uh, Daily Chronicle and uh, WLBK working alongside uh, with uh, Scott Zach. Uh, uh, they called me last night and this morning early uh, and, and like you, Alderman Fanuka, and I was very, very candid when I said that Bessie and I didn't always agree, but, you know, I think we respected the position, we respected each other, and we respected uh, the fact that uh, uh, there are different, different views to, to uh, any side of an issue, and, and uh, yeah, we will certainly miss her. And as I had indicated early on in our meeting tonight, there's going to be many, many more posts and many more uh, tributes uh, in the in the days and weeks ahead. Okay, uh, Alderman Smith, third ward. Uh, no report. And how about uh, fourth ward, Alderman Perkins? No report. And fifth ward, Scott McAdams. I also want to speak out uh, to uh, uh, mourn the loss of Bessie Chronopoulos. Uh, what can, there's been so much that's been said, but she truly did love this city and she will truly be missed. Alderman Verbeek, our sixth ward alderman. Yes, I was fortunate to uh, get to know Bessie uh, more in about 2011. And uh, getting to know her, I was on the school board at that time. I admired her tenacity for open government and learned a lot mm -hmm. from her. Uh, she invited me into her home and uh, just had years of great conversation and camaraderie. And uh, she really, uh, the people of DeKalb, meant everything to her. You better believe it. Tony, favor our seventh, our seventh ward alderman. Uh, I too just want to extend condolences to uh, her family. Um, you know, it, as has been said, she's uh, certainly shared her opinion uh, on how she felt about things. Um, we agreed on, a few, on some things and others we didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was always happy to talk about where our differences lied and she uh, you know, respected a person's opinion uh, in, in how they uh, how they came to their to uh, their decision. So I I too will uh, will miss you know chatting and emailing with her. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. A favor. On the wall in my office is a framed quotation given to me by Bessie Chronopoulos shortly after I assumed this position in 2017. It is credited to Thomas Jefferson and it reads thusly, when a man assumes a public trust, he should consider himself as public property. As I transition from that office in the next few weeks, my intent is to leave that framed gift in place on my office wall as a reminder to the next mayor of just how important those words are 
to those of us who have been given the privilege to serve the city of DeKalb. City Clerk Fazekas, any report? Thank you, no report. And City Manager Nicholas? No report. We do have an executive session tonight following adjournment of this regular meeting. We will be meeting to hold an executive session in order to discuss Number one, purchase or lease of real property as provided for in 5 ILCS 122 C5. And number two, pending and or imminent litigation as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 2 C11. I now entertain a motion to recess into executive session. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Verbeek and seconded by Alderman Favor that this city council recess into executive session. Any discussion? Roll call. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Sanukin. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Adai? A simple reminder once again for security reasons, for those on Zoom, we will have to say good night to you tonight. Uh, and we will meet in executive session. It has been moved and seconded and voted. We are in recess.